Hey, Coach, how are you? Doing great. How about you? Doing pretty good. I didn't realize I can see me on camera now. I look like I'm in a Snuggie, don't I? You look good. Yeah. I'm not arguing <laughs> with that. Thanks. I do. I, I feel pretty good. I look like I'm in a Snuggie. I'm talking like one of the coolest, youngest coaches in America. Uh, <laughs> Coach Brown, how's your day going today? So far, so good. I you see. Know, it's an, been, a, been a typical Wednesday, you know, come in early and, you know, kind of a middle week prep for a, for a football game. Walk me through what a week of prep is like. The, the game Saturday, let's say game happens, you win. What do you do on Sunday? And then how does that go all the way up until the game the next, uh, the next Saturday? Yeah, usually Sunday mornings um, I give our staff off. Uh, we try, try to – obviously I, I attend a local church here in Conway, Arkansas, and I hope uh, a lot of my staff does too. And we, we usually get in and staff meet about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, watch watch film and, and clean up the game from the night before. Uh, we bring, actually bring our players in on Sunday evenings, so uh, we'll, we'll have treatment. They'll, you know, they'll get their bumps and bruises fixed and have a team meeting at 6 p.m. And we're as soon as that team meeting's over, we're, we're meeting and practicing on Sunday evening. So um, usually we get out of here by about 9, 9.30, um, you know, on, on Sunday nights. And uh, my players have Mondays off. That's that's the mandatory day off that they get every week. So Completely. they've got no football-related related things on Monday. So um, nothing. So but do you, is it one of those things, though, where it's like wink, wink, you have the day off? Yeah, but of you course. Better, oh, you, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You better be no, watching no film. Question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want, you, want them, you, want them, you want them to have self-motivation, right? Yeah. And and uh, obviously that's that's highly encouraged by a coaching staff. <laughs> so they're, uh, they're back on you know, Tuesday. But, yeah, but that, that's that's a big day for us as a coaching staff too. Mondays mm. is we're we're putting a lot of time and prep in. We we don't have to worry about practice or anything, getting it prepared. So we spend a lot of time on our next opponent on Mondays, and then Tuesdays and Wednesdays are very similar. Um, our guys will get a workout in in the morning, and then uh, and then we'll have you know good prep days as far as practice goes and on Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons, and really Thursdays uh, Thursdays are are kind of a polished day. You know, get out there and make sure we we've got everything you know tied up and you know got any loose ends fixed and. And Friday's either a walkthrough day or a travel day, and you, you repeat it again starting that next Saturday and Sunday. Do you guys still hit at practice? Not like we used to. You know, um, back probably probably what a lot of people are used to. Um, you know, you, you put the pads on still, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays would be what you'd call your most physical practice days. Um, but, but man, we, we don't hit the ground hardly at all. You know, we tap off on the ball carriers. We, you know, we don't even thud up really. We just, you know, it's, it's you know, there's such a emphasis on – you know, injury prevention and obviously uh, the concussion protocols and all those things that, that we're monitoring. Uh, you just don't want to put yourself in a position to put a player at risk and, and not have them for the weekend. So, um, you know, we, we, we try to get a little bit of physical um, attention as far as practice goes, but, uh, but not much, not much hitting goes on like it used to 10, 15, 20 years ago. What's that fine line? Because you're not doing it in the middle of the week, but what about – when you get together in spring or what about yeah. before the season starts. And I'm sure that line has had to move just in your coaching career and how hard and how quickly and how much you let them hit. It, it has. And, and really, you know, I've been a coach for about 12 years now um, and, and it's changed even in that short amount of time. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still going to, we're still going to have two uh, tackle scrimmages in the spring. Uh, we'll have at least one before our first game in the fall. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll still have some times where our defense gets attacked. We obviously put an emphasis on tackling drills with bags and some different tackling circuit stuff. Um, but, but, you know, the days of, uh, take the ball carrier down to the ground a hundred times in practice, those days have been long gone. And, uh, you know, it, it, it also is just as, as the offenses and defenses have evolved in football. I mean, that's probably why more teams are going to a more spread out attack. Right. I mean, it's just not the physical nature of, you know, what we would call Big Ten football, that's rare. You know, getting the eye formation, turn and hand the ball to the running back and have an old school fullback and tight end. I mean, those days just are, are, aren't aren't normal anymore. So um, this probably has a lot to do with the way you practice. I'm about five years older than you, but when I – and I like to talk about my high school football days for a second because uh, I played a little bit myself. But, um, we, you know, we play a little bull in the ring, and we get we get in, and everybody circles you, and you get in, you point, boom, hit, boom, hit. You guys still do crap like that? Because that was stupid of us to do that. <laughs> so that that was that's actually been outlawed. Uh, you, huh. You're not allowed to to really do what what you know the old school Oklahoma drill or board drills. You know, line up and just bang heads and see who the toughest guy is. I mean, and that's changed that changed as, as recent as about three or four years ago. So even early in my head coaching career, we would start practice off a lot of times, especially in the spring and early fall, um, with with you know kind of an attitude drill like that. But you can't do that anymore, and yeah. uh, and I think probably for good reason. I mean, that's like 
going up and banging your head up against a brick wall. You know, I mean, like, why would you do that, right? Yeah, I hated it. I hated it. I hated bull in the ring. I would go first before everybody got real loose, and I'd hop in. I'd be the bull, <laughs> and I'd pick on little guys, and they'd say, nope, we're going to send the biggest. It was awful. Another thing was we were only rewarded with water. Like that was practice. You <laughs> yeah. you were rewarded with water, and so if you practiced hard, you got water. I'm assuming water is readily available these days. It's it's readily <laughs> readily available, and every station has a Powerade on it too. Mm-hmm. So, so there you can get flavored water now. So they, I'll tell you what, you would be amazed. And I know you've been around a lot of, obviously with Arkansas and a lot of college programs. I mean, you would be amazed at the the common fan who doesn't go watch practice at how many athletic trainers and and water services are available for our athletes. And it's at every station. It's at every drill. Um, yeah, they've got they've got water re- readily available for them at all times. I'm going to ask you a tough question here, and I'm, what I'm going to count on is your honesty. You ever played Madden and stolen a play from Madden? <laughs> you know, I haven't played Madden in years. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but man, early in my career, I was, I was a quarterback coach, um, you know, when I first broke into college coaching. And uh, I still would dabble with Madden at times. Um, back back then, so uh, there's no doubt. I mean, those concepts are real. Absolutely. I mean, they're putting, it's, it's not like they're putting together, you know, fake content there, right? It's 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 real concepts, and they work, you know. So uh, I think you know the glitches in the system sometimes make them catch it when they're not supposed to. But like, uh, but like, yeah, that's that's real stuff. We run a lot of the same concepts. I mean, you look at you know the the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I see them. We got we, in our players' lounge. We've got Madden and all that Xbox, PlayStation. It's always going with guys in there. And you see guys, see coach, come here, come here, look at this. We need to run this play on this. Exactly. I'm like, guys, come on now. <laughs> like it's not, I, quite I, the way, it's not quite the way it works. I think I could be an OC just by being good at Madden. You know, there's a play that I run that works a lot. I'm gonna pass it along to you. Feel free to write it down if you want. Um, but it's play action to the left. The tight end then runs a drag, which turns into a corner as the other two wide receivers from the left are crossing the field. Open every time because that safety bites. And next thing you know, boom, I got Kittle in the end zone, Coach. Feel free to run with it. Yeah, we, I, well, it's funny you, you explained that. I, we actually completed a pass on a similar concept last Saturday night. So. Oh. <laughs> well, it's been done. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Hey, coach, do you feel – because, again, you're one of the youngest coaches um, in college football. Do you ever feel that some of the older coaches – I don't know, make you earn your stripes to them? Is there an age sort of, well, we don't feel like you're there quite yet because you are so young? Yeah, I, th- I don't think there's any question. I think in any profession, if, if you break in at a young age, there's almost a, uh, almost like a, a you know, a, a period of time where, where you've got to, you've got to earn your right. You've got to, you got to earn your stripes to be, be where you are. And, um, you know, what's crazy is I'm 36 years old and, and I'm in year five of being a head coach. I mean, I've, I got, I've, I've received the head coaching job at 31 years old here at Central Arkansas. And so, um, you know, I, I'm actually, I've actually been a head coach longer than uh, all but one coach in our conference. And, and they're all older than me, quite a bit older than me. So, um, so I've, I feel like experience wise, uh, you know, as far as just the nuts and bolts of being a head coach, I have five years under my belt. And so, yeah, I'm young as far as the age goes, but but a lot of experience comes with that. But I don't think there's any question that – and, and then personally, you always want to be – you know, you want to do the profession right. You want to make sure that you earn the respect of, obviously, people you admire or people that maybe you model your coaching style after. And, um, you know, but it. But bottom line is, is, is and the NFL's proven it too, um, co- coaching – football coaching has become a young man's sport. I mean, you look at – the, the age of some of the NFL head coaches. I mean, they're, they're my age and there's some, there's even, a, I think one or two younger than me at this point. So, um, you know, people are, you know, organizations and, and, and obviously franchises are, are trending toward that direction. I mean, if you can coach, you can coach. And I think as a young minded coach, you've seen a lot of innovation uh, in the way people are, 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 are coaching football games today, not only in college football, but in the NFL level. So I think it's just the norm at this point. You know, you've set every, basically every passing record at UCA and, you have obviously quarterbacks that you're relying on now to uh, perform, and hopefully, I'm assuming you want them to break your records because that means that you are doing your job as a coach. But do you ever just want to put the pads on and go out and throw and show them how it's really done? <laughs> I could probably do that. I, I tell our guys all the time, like, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't, I couldn't go for a whole game and probably make it, but I promise you, I could give you a half and be in good <laughs> shape. And look, like, like, and I try to coach my players in this same aspect. And that's, that's like. When I was a player, I was, you know, I was, I wasn't the biggest guy. I wasn't the fastest guy. I didn't have the best arm, but, but I had, I would, I would slit your throat to win a game, you know, and I would, I was an ultra competitor. And so that's the way I coach them. I, I want, I want guys that want to compete. I want, 
and like you said, I, if, if my if my records are broken here, um, you know, whatever they are, I hope I'm coaching the guy that does it, right? That means I'm doing my job. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely go out there. I go out there and throw the ball at practice and, and do some different things. But but <laughs> I'll tell you, my arm, my arm doesn't recover quite as well the next day as it used to when I was 18 to 22 years old. Why do you find it important to play so many FBS schools? Well, I think one, there's some benefits to that. One, the first is financially for, for a program like us that, um, you know, we played, I think, seven or eight in my five years. Um, and we've got one win out of that group. You know, we beat Western Kentucky in 2019, and they were, you know, they were a nine-win bowl team. They actually beat the University of Arkansas that year. I mean, I'm not trying to bring up bad blood there, but, um, <laughs> easy. but, but they, easy, but easy they coach. did beat Arkansas that yeah, year. Easy coach. <laughs> Uh, but but no no not 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 letting that 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 not, not saying that but I just think financially it's a gain for 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 a you know a, a mid major small program college football program I mean, it allows us to you know supplement some stuff in our budget and you know that that's a big deal for us and you know we you know we 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 obviously have to uh, you know we have to extend the dollar a little more than probably a lot of the bigger programs so um, that's a big deal and then I think recruiting is the second reason I mean you you get an opportunity to recruit guys that. You know, maybe felt like they were slighted by a bigger program or by their flagship flagship state program. Like we've got, you know, I think we've got, you know, we've got double digit kids from the state of Mississippi, and to get the chance to play Ole Miss this year was a big deal to them. And you know, because that's a school they grew up loving, grew up rooting for. So to have a chance to go to Vaught Hemingway Stadium and run out of that tunnel and compete against the team you watched your whole life, I mean, that's a great opportunity for those guys. So I think I think it's twofold. Obviously, the financial gains, but I think in recruiting, it's a big deal as well. Let's talk about the portal for a second because now if a player plays really well for you, do you automatically have like start recruiting him to stay, which you maybe hadn't had to do before? Yeah, it's, that's that's obviously the world we're in right now is, um, especially at our level of football, I mean, here in a couple of weeks, uh, all these FCS and, and maybe, maybe uh, you know, group of five conferences are about to put out their all-conference teams, right? So what do you think that, you know, what do you think the, the power five conferences are going to be doing? They're probably going to be combing those all conference teams to purge, right? I mean, they want to, they want to go get these kids and they, they have success and those can be, you know, instant impact guys if they have a space to fill. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a great job recruiting our own players. And I tell our, our coaches that, that yeah, you've got a recruiting area, you've got an assignment, whether it's your position or it's your region that you're recruiting or city you're recruiting, but you better recruit those dudes in your, in your room right now that are there right now uh moving forward because we nothing is guaranteed anymore there's no there's no uh there's no teeth to to transferring at this point i mean um so so if a kid has success i mean i don't think there's any question that that, that it's going to be difficult to hold on to them in the world we're in um, but i do tell tell our, our 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 players and our coaches this i think we run a program here that that is conducive to success I mean, look i try to i try to coach our players that you know don't don't uh you know, don't be wrapped up in your identity on the football field. Hopefully we're giving you more than just football, you know, whether that's the whole collegiate experience, the academic side, the social side, you know, so hopefully, hopefully football is not just what's sustaining them here at UCA, but, but much more. Um, a hypothetical comparison for you, if you don't mind. So if a head coach has a lot of uh, coordinators that move on to bigger jobs or it could in NFL or college, either way, that head coach is looked at as successful and other great coordinators want to come and work for that coach. In the same respect, if you have players, and this is my last question about the portal, let's say you have players that are leaving to go to schools that are bigger. Um, yeah. Is that looked is it looked upon you as success because you have players that you've graduated and does that help in recruiting? That's kind of a double-edged sword question there. <laughs> you know, you, yeah, yes, it does. I would think that I would think that in the world we're in, especially with social media and, and uh, you know, just, just the way we live on the internet, I think, you know, kids know stuff, student athletes know stuff probably more or quicker than I would as a head coach. So they know the success of what a kid has maybe at their second spot that they win. You know, we, we just – our, our All-American receiver last year, Tyler Hudson, is the leading receiver this year for the University of Louisville. So like when it, it goes off, he wins a son player of the year last year has, you know, 1400 yards receiving 12 touchdowns. He, you know, he hits the transfer portal. He's at university of Louisville and he's their leading receiver right now. And, you know, they're about to be bowl eligible. I mean, so I, I don't think for one second that people don't see that, um, you know, how you use that in recruiting is, is obviously, obviously uh, your, your, your program and culture's personal decision, you know, whether you sell that or not, I don't know. Um, it's, it, we're still all kind of in that new world of how kind of navigating through this transfer portal and how you, how you handle it. So, 
Um, I would say that there's going to be a lot of programs that probably do use that to their advantage. Hey, look, these this this many kids have gone on to play at bigger schools, you know, and it's almost like a junior college system, right? I mean, junior colleges sell to high school recruits. Hey, this is how many kids have signed out of here with FBS programs, and they they get kids because of that. So, I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not quite sold on that yet. I mean, I like I like the thought of keeping our guys here in purple and gray, but but again, that's not to say that you can't you can't and won't evolve with the times. You're a three-time All-American quarterback, and you finish at, with all these records. Um, you go, and so what happens, because you went undrafted, correct? And so what do you do as someone who obviously has talent, who goes undrafted, you have dreams of playing in the NFL, what's what's that next move, and what happened with you? Well, one, I was beyond blessed with the opportunity I had. I mean, coming, come, you know, finishing my eligibility up in 2008, I, I, I got the opportunity to sign with a great agency, um, went and trained um, for the, for the NFL combine and, and, and draft, um, got an invitation to the East West Shrine game. And then the following week, got an invitation to the senior bowl. So um, at the time uh, I was university of Arkansas's first senior bowl invite, which is obviously the biggest bowl game for a senior, as far as that goes. And, uh, went and actually played really well. I was uh, the North team's offensive MVP in the game. So I'm sitting there thinking, man, this the cards are stacking up. I mean, I know I'm not a first round, second round, third round talent, but man, somebody's got it. Has to take a chance on me in the middle rounds, late rounds. And uh, went to the combine. I wasn't obviously told you earlier, I'm not the fastest guy in the world, all that, but I threw the ball well, did, did, did everything I needed to do. Um, it just didn't work out. I did, you know, the, the draft is a fickle situation. You know, I, I, there was three different times in that 2009 NFL draft where I was getting calls from my agent saying, hey, I think you're, I think the 49ers are going to take you right here. And then a pick or two before them would change the way they they, they drafted their spot, you know, but just it's just such a weird deal. And uh, you're at the mercy of other people's pick and, and, and what the, you know, are they drafted best on the board or whatever it is, you know. So it just didn't work out. And so I ended up signing with Jacksonville uh, with the Jaguars and, and spent a little time with them. And that seemed like a great situation for me. Um, personally, and just just with their quarterback situation, didn't end up working out. Ended up getting cut, and then ended up with the Saints. And uh, after the Saints ended up cutting me, um, you know, I'd just gotten married to my wife Jessica. Uh, we were, we had we had been together at UCA, met when we were young, and you know we're together our, through our whole career here. And um, you know, I I kind of made the decision like I know I'm going to be a football coach, right? I'm gonna, that's that, that's ultimately what I'm going to be. No matter how long I played in the NFL or whatever that was, um, I was going to get into coaching and. Um, we made the, you know, kind of the, the, the decision mutually just to, just to pursue the coaching side of it. And, uh, and really, in hindsight, wouldn't change it one bit. I had some CFL opportunities to go to Canada, um, had a couple different opportunities to go. Like the Steelers called me uh, in the middle of the, the fall season in 2009 and wanted me to come up for a tryout. Uh, it, just, it, it just didn't feel right. I felt like I'd turned the page. Um, the coaching had an opportunity at UCA to come be the quarterback coach right away, basically. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, in hindsight, would, ne- would not change. I mean, to get the opportunity to be a head football coach at a Division One school at 31 years old is rare. Um, and to be in one place for really your whole coaching career um, is even more rare, right? And so um, to this point in my career, I'm just excited to be where I'm at. But those experiences and relationships I was able to build and make um, in that process of leading up to the NFL and even on those organizations um, is definitely something I still think helps me today. You went from QB coach to OC to head coach all at UCA. You played at UCA. Obviously, you're a UCA guy. I think you're the UCA Hall, Hall of Fame. Like, you're already king dingling at UCA. It's pretty cool. I'm assuming, though, with – and this is, again, just an assumption. I'm assuming you've been getting calls from other places. I have, and, 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 it's, and it's happened. And, and I, tell, I tell – man, I tell people all the time, I mean, I'm not going to paint myself in a corner and lie or say something that – I come back and say, well, you said this this one time. You're never leaving UCA. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say that. I mean, if opportunity comes that's that's right, um, you know, whether whatever that is or where whatever it looks like, I mean, that's a, a obviously a prayerful kiss consideration I'd make with my family and 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 it's but it but it would take it would take a lot plus the kitchen sink to get me out of this place. I mean, this place is obviously um, I've got deep roots here, uh, not only just with the university but with the community. Uh, my wife and kids love it here. I mean, this is just a special place. And I think if anybody spends a little bit of time in this, in, not only in this football program, but this university, you figure out real fast that this is just, and it's because of the people, it's a special place. And, you know, I tell people when I get a chance to speak about and promote the university, I mean, 
you can slip me at the wrist and I'll bleed purple. I mean, it really is. I mean, that's really the the approach I have and the, the you know, so much that UCA and this community has given to me. I'm, I'm just happy I get to give back to it. Well, here's the thing. He's talking about slitting two different body parts in this interview. <laughs> to be honest with you, coach, you've, you've slit two body parts and I'm, that's, and that's, that's what happens when you're living in the, in the NIL and transfer portal mm, world. The salt <laughs> slit. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, so you were born in Mississippi. You went to, you, you played high school ball in Russellville, right? I did. Yeah. I did. I was born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And, uh, in elementary age, moved up to Arkansas, and uh, basically, basically was raised in Russellville. Well, listen, Coach. I the, the purple field sometimes is hard to look at, although it's awesome that you have your own thing. I like that that, that people know you guys by the by the field, right? It's hard to stand apart in any way whatsoever. So I like I like it. Just like Boise has their blue field, like you're known for that, but you're also known for so much more than that. And I love what you've done with the program up there. And man, just just keep killing it. You know, I think you set a great example uh, to a lot of people. Like, you know where you fit in. You were celebrated. You also celebrate it very well. Yep. And just uh, really looking forward to to seeing you guys, you know, take down some of those big schools, win your conference, and we'll see what happens. I'm always proud to see an Arkansas – I consider you an Arkansas guy, honestly. You're here since elementary Absolutely. school. You're an Arkansas guy. So I always love to see an Arkansas guy doing it, man, because there's not a whole a whole um, lot – for when I was a kid, I didn't get to see a lot, a lot of Arkansas people setting a good example that you can go and just – pursue your dreams so yep. i appreciate that you do that and you lead by example and i appreciate your time coach man i appreciate it special place and and obviously respect what you do and what the way you do it and uh appreciate you taking the time and, and listening to my story a little bit and, and and getting this opportunity i know it's a big deal and um you know just a blessing man and uh you know i've got a good group of guys here and, and love this place and always gonna be purple man purple bear claws up if you need me to draw that madden play out to you text it to you i will you got, um, you've got my email. I, I'm always open, open eyes and ears. I promise. <laughs> do you ever try to do the center sneak? Is that a thing? Can you do that? We used to do that. Is, can you can do, is that a fumble risk? The fumble risky is in our playbook. So yeah. Really? How many plays do you think? Can you? How many plays can you call from? It, how many, all in. How many plays can you call from? Oh gosh, man, you that a lot. Estimate. I mean, Ten. Oh no, way more than that. <laughs> way more than that. Way more than that. <laughs> I'm, I mean, upwards of, I would say, you know, in any given game, probably 50, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. the 75, I would say in the playbook, you're talking upwards of 150, right? Like you may not carry them all in a game. One final question, the idiot question here. Sometimes if I know they're going to run on Madden coach, I'll go, I'll go eight. <laughs> I'll send eight and I'll drop three back. I'm like, we're yeah, selling sense. all out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's ex sense. Yes, that's exactly. We're going in. We're going all. You ever do that? You have to. You have to on third and short, fourth and short. Uh -huh. I mean, that, that you you you've got on your on your paper, your 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 analytics say they're running the ball. You've got to fill all every gap, every gap that's possible on that run run play. So yeah, yeah I'm all in on that. Yeah, I'm probably Absolutely. gonna do a little play action on you, throw that tight end move. Now that I know, <laughs> if I'm ever coaching against you, that's what I'm doing. I'm running that play I just told you about. If you have ever have anybody that does does a, does the wedge fake quarterback sneak throw the fade ball that's that's nasty yeah. that'll that'll get you that's what I'll do right now all right Adam <laughs> you want to say anything before we go yeah man I coach thank you for your time uh, I am a Conway guy I graduated from uh, UCA we were there at the same time I watched you play I watched you throw that fade to Aaron Fruz many many times <laughs> and uh, and it's a real pleasure to have you on thanks for selling Conway thanks for loving Arkansas and thanks for doing what you do man. Yeah, Adam, you're, you're a stud too, man. Uh, we, 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 we definitely take great pride in you being a UCA alum and what you're doing as well, man. And he will slit your throat if you give him any problems. <laughs> All right, Coach. Go Bears. Good to see you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Bye. you guys.